finally happened. We moved so slowly on climate change that we were overtaken by the Catholic Church. Yes, the Catholics. The only group of people less progressive than the guys that make the ads for Lynx deodorant. We've done so little to prevent climate change that the Catholic Church is taking the moral high ground. The Catholic Church. The people who spent the last millennia murdering Muslims, torturing Latin Americans, and raping children looked at the world's climate plan and said, well, that, that is immoral. Uh, last Thursday, the Pope released an encyclical, a letter to thousands of bishops which demanded urgent action on climate change. Previously, Pope Francis has stated, and this is an actual quote, that humankind had slapped nature in the face. He said, God always forgives, we men sometimes forgive, nature never forgives. If you slap it, it will always slap you back. And while the Pope might have confused climate change with getting drunk and fighting a tree, his effort to mobilize 1.2 billion Catholics is pretty amazing. I mean, it doesn't make up for saying condoms don't work or the Spanish Inquisition, but it is a very nice letter. Here in New Zealand, however, action on climate change is moving at the speed of a snail that died several years ago. People have been trying to push for a proper carbon tax since before I was born, and it still hasn't happened, which is very demoralizing for our generation. When I was two years old, two, the IPCC reported that climate change would cause death, diarrhea, malnutrition, hunger, impairment of child growth, migration crowding, allergic disorders, mental health disorders, infectious diseases, and quote unquote, civil strife. I'd only been here two years. That's terrifying news. The world's dying to you, Rob Robbie. You've got to do something. Why are you doing anything? <clears throat> and while two-year-old Robbie, quite frankly, did Fuck all. Some people were trying very hard to reduce New Zealand's carbon emissions. In the 90s, National MP Simon Upton really wanted a carbon tax, and it was up to the business roundtable to fly in Professor Richard Lindzen to explain, scientifically, why that was such a bad idea. When Richard started doing his ABC for beginners, I was reasonably uh, well equipped to say, yes, well, I know all that, and add a few more facts, and so, so then he changed tack and, and started to say that, that what really worried him was that this reminded him, you know, of the debate over eugenics in the 1930s. Which is a great point, because in many ways, preventing climate change is Nazism. Uh, despite intense lobbying from these bastards, after four years, the national government was finally ready to commit to waiting another three years. After three years, they finally, oh, no, actually, they waited another year. But in their final year, they were ready to announce that they were waiting one last year. Then it was Labour's turn. To mix things up, they waited another seven years. Meanwhile, it was becoming apparent for people of my generation that we had arrived at the party after the house was already on fire, and we were starting to realize that you weren't supposed to mention the fire. You were just supposed to sit in it and gradually wait to die. Eventually, Labour invited the farmers, responsible for 40% of our emissions, to pay for research to figure out if there was any way they might be able to produce slightly less emissions, so that, you know, less people died. As you'd expect from a group whose livelihoods literally depend on stable weather, the farmers loved the idea. Climate change is the most important long-term environmental problem facing this country, and it will hit farming first. We don't believe you, please! We don't believe you! Great! <laughs> Things continued to get worse as the Nats took over again and slashed the emissions trading scheme that David Parker had nearly died trying to introduce. Meanwhile, New Zealand was struggling through more extreme droughts and floods that somehow didn't cancel each other out. And New Zealand's emissions had tripled since 1990, rising faster than most developed countries. That's fucked. But luckily the Pope isn't. I mean, obviously he's not allowed to have sex, but also he's correct. We need to take action on climate change now. We can't keep pointing to China and saying, look how bad their emissions are, because they're using the same excuse and we can't all do nothing forever. And sure, you might feel like you can't fight climate change. And you're right, but a global movement can. And that movement is growing. Victoria University has joined Oxford and Stanford in divesting from fossil fuels. The entire European Union, including countries like Slovakia and Estonia, have committed to cut their emissions by 40% by 2030. Even the former chairperson of Shell said that divesting from fossil fuels was the rational thing to do. So, for fear of living in a world where New Zealand is less forward-thinking than Romania, Shell, and the Catholic Church, Sincerely, New Zealand, catch the fuck up. Amen.